Now we can go. Three, two, one. Let's do one of those silly videos, like you see with the wave coming over, yeah. like you're posing for a picture and a wave comes over you. Okay, never mind. Step back, keep stepping back. Keep stepping back. We are on the taxi waiting for the other passengers to go to the cruise ship. It's cruise day. Whee! Say something. Yay. <laughs> We're See. <sitting>. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it changed. Oh, go ahead. No, I want to see how cold this is. Ah, that's right. Once you jump in, and then you come right back out and you get in here. Ah. Oh my God. Was that invigorating? Huh? Was that invigorating? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold, but it's not, it's not like polar bear cold. Oh. Yeah. 
Go ahead. Ah. Yes, that bad. Yes, that bad. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. But I did it. So again, although no, we're in Naples this time. Last time was Chibi Tabacchia with Fermina. Which he was By right, way, I thought he was wrong. We got a statue of Fermina, a picture of I'll put that, Fermina's statue. I'll put that right after this. Oh, and we got, we're sitting now, of course, in a jacuzzi, our favorite place. And it's the movies going on right now. So, um, we're in Naples, we decided, I decided for us to uh, to not get off the court because uh, we're going to come back later on and visit a bunch of different things. But uh, anything special Naples is known for? Oh, and uh, the pizza, obviously. But there's a place I wanted to go today and we're not going where they make um, all the fried fish and vegetables and they put it in a cone and it's just like a snack. You walk around and so it's like um, uh, fried uh, anchovies and galamav and everything. And I can only imagine how delicious it is. But I, next time, that's for next time. What are you having? It's uh, anchovies. Actually, it looks like squid. I ordered uh, anchovies. Anyway, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you lost some. Mm -hmm. You lost some. The cats will get that. Good. Is it good? Oh. I said. This is so good. These anchovies are out of this world. Unbelievable. They're not like the little canned things that you got. We're sitting here in on the main street in Heraklion. Uh, we stopped so Michael could get a kebab. Uh, what is it, Michael? Lamb? Lamb beef and pork. Lamb beef and pork. Oh, good. Mm. And delicious. smells delicious, yeah. The French fries. I'm, I'm holding out for octopus. Octopus. Yeah. Anyway. So. Oh, that looks good, Michael. We saw this street off of the main street, and there's a lot of uh, stalls, uh, handcrafted stuff. Um, we just got ourselves a couple of leather bags. Uh, something like this, but in leather. And real good for travel. <coughs> Carry everything. Now, first of all, I want you guys to listen carefully. You guys hear it? Mm -hmm. There's a silkworm inside. And unfortunately, we need to kill this guy. If we don't kill him, what happens? He cuts a hole in the cocoon and he comes out as a moth. Mm. Now, coming out as a moth isn't the issue. The issue is cutting a hole in the cocoon. Mm. That means you cannot obtain the long yarn you need. Do you know how long a yarn of a cocoon that you need to make it? Oh, about a mile to mile and a half long. Mile and a mile, about a mile to mile and a half long of a thin yarn like this. You see that? Can you do that? Do the same so we can see. That thin thread, this is how we obtain it. So imagine obtaining that thread without breaking it. You try to do it like this, it doesn't work. It's hard. Yeah. So what we do is we take these, we put them in warm water with the help of this high technology Bristol brush. <laughs> <laughs> we catch the ends, all right? Now, why we put it in hot water? The cocoon will absorb the water. It'll inflate. 
and it's easy for the cocoon to be unraveled. If you listen carefully to do that, bud. See, it's, it's hard, it's like cardboard. Because the silkworm, when it leaves that little silk out, it also leaves a, a little thing called saliva, and that dries up. That's what makes it so hard. So to dilute that, you just use hot water, that's all. Okay, so now, ready? Watch what happens. She'll, crap, she'll grab the ends with the help of the bristle brush. She lifts it up. Oh. Now, wow. give that, okay? do you see how every one of these guys, there's so many fibers on this one. Do you see, look, can you see that, buddy? Mm -hmm. We can't use that, we need one. So what she'll do, she'll grab all that, she'll take it down. The first few hand rolls is what we call the loose ends, or the fluff of the cocoon that you would refer to. She'll take all that down, okay? Four, buddy. Now watch, yeah. And look at that. Now you see all those fibers? Now those guys need to be joined together to obtain the thin yarn. So what she'll do, she'll go through this little hoop, twisting it around here, through the loop, around there, and watch what happens in the water. This is the part you're gonna like. Watch this. See what's happening here? These guys are jumping up and down. They're not dying, they're already dead. They're simply unraveling. So this is the only way you're able to get the water. Okay? And they're moving up and down. You see that? Look. So all of the silk is being unraveled from there back into there. Now, when all of the silk is unraveled through there into there, yeah, you're going to grab that and you can show everyone. That's what it is. Can you just pull it up from there? Okay, my apprentice is going to show you the raw silk after it's out of the cocoon. Show, show everyone. <laughs> Let everybody touch it, buddy. Okay? So that's it there, that's raw silk. Touch Goldilocks' hair. <laughs> yeah, it feels like horse's hair, okay? Because it still has that saliva. But we need to soften that up. So what do we do? We wash it again, and then we dye it into the colors, and then this is the finished product. Feel that. Oh. How's that feel, bud? Yeah. See the difference? Oh, yeah. So that's the finished product. Now the coloring of silk. Silk is not natural dyes. Silk is not absorbent like wool or cotton, so you have to use what we call chrome aniline dyes, which are simply chemical dyes. <laughs> okay, do you have any other questions?
There we go. So, I don't know much about the history of these windmills, but they're well, they're famous here on Mekonos. Uh, they're pretty. They're pretty, and I think they need some new fabric in them. Yeah. This is the temple of Athena and Nygdon. And in ancient Greece, when they had the original Olympics, this was the Nike factory where they made their sneakers. I don't think I don't think that's true. Yeah, well sure, because they needed them. How else were they gonna run in the Olympics? They didn't run with sneakers. I think they did. They didn't wear clothes, but they had sneakers. Okay, you do that to me all the time. Um, so I'm recording. So everyone that calls me a finicky eater, I want you to know I try everything. This is octopus. Uh -huh. Tastes like chicken. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Michael, how could you resist that? I don't know. No. It's, it's white wine. For like uh, three dollars, you can't beat it. Do you like, know what? What was it? <laughs> look, 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 look. Do this. Ah. Mm. All right, I'm getting back to my octopus. Thank you. 
Parada. Hey, well. All right, that's it.